Well, welcome to Restoration Church Online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Uh, my name is Katie. And my name is Kurt. And we're the lead pastors of Restoration Church. And again, uh, you are joining us on an awesome day. We don't always normally get to team teach like yeah, this, but uh, today we're actually kicking off a new series called Heart of the Matter, where we are going to be looking at how do you live and love from the core of who you are. So it's easy to think about a heart-shaped box of chocolates or something this yeah. time of year. I mean, uh, or to think of your physical heart's health, especially after you eat said box of chocolates. Uh, but today and throughout the rest of this series of conversations, we're actually going to be exploring a powerful truth that the scriptures remind us of. And that is everything to do with our life actually flows from yeah. our own heart. Now, that is true of our physical hearts, right? If your heart stops beating and your blood stops flowing, your life would soon come to an mm -hmm. end. But what the scriptures are talking about right. here are not just our biology, right? They're not just talking about avoiding death, uh, but actually showing us how to really live. That actually we are invited to live and love from the core of who we are. So often we wonder, right, how to have healthy relationships right. by focusing on, you know, all the things that are out there, whether it's mm. finding the right person, the right circumstances, right? But all along, God invites us for the sake of all of our relationships right. as co-workers, parents, sons and daughters, as friends, as spouses and lovers, right? God invites us to examine the most influential factor in all of our relationships, mm. and that's our very own heart. That's right. Yeah, and King Solomon, who was considered to be the wisest person that ever lived, uh, he actually wrote about this. And he really wrote about everything. He, yeah. he wrote about money and relationships. He wrote about work. He wrote about marriage. He wrote about failed relationships. And, and really, we, we explore his writings, the book of Proverbs and the Song of Solomon, two very different books. It shows that he actually knows a lot about relationships and wisdom. And so specifically for the conversation we're in today, Proverbs 4.23, he writes this incredibly powerful passage and it says, above all else, guard your heart because everything you do, everything in your life flows from it. Yeah. So we need to ask the question, like, what if that's true? Like, that's not even really a religious thought. Like, what, what if that's just true and how we interact in our life? What if what Solomon is really writing is Hey, everything that you do, everything in your life, everything that I've written about, everything I've said, if you forget all of that, like you ever have a conversation like that with your kids, if you, ever, if you forget everything else I've said, remember this. He's boiling it down to say, if you remember nothing else from all that I've written, all the wisdom that I've offered you, don't forget, above all else, guard your heart. Meaning, watch out for, pay attention, be willing to protect, be willing to take stock of what is actually going on inside of you. So it's so important because everything in our life flows from it. Yeah. Because what's happening inside your heart, it affects and even directs your life, Solomon would say. Mm -hmm. What this means is that we need to pay attention to what's actually going on inside of our heart, our emotions, the spaces that no one else can see. Because even though they can't see it, it actually affects everyone around us. You, you can put it this way. Pay attention to what's going on inside of you because it affects those around you. Pay attention to what's going on inside of you because it affects those around you. Right. So, so what do we actually do with all of this? Right. What does it look like to begin to guard your heart? Right. And we want to make this as practical and helpful as mm -hmm. possible so that your relationships actually get better. Right. Isn't that what all of us want? Absolutely. That's what I want. Right. I want to spend a few minutes talking about four different signals that mm. should get your attention. If you find yourself in a moment where you're feeling one of these things. And when I think about guarding something precious, right, it usually takes a pretty aggressive stance. Right. right. A guard is usually someone of substance. Right. That you have a willingness to confront. Uh, to have a clear plan of action, right? Imagine if someone came at you or came at someone that you love, right? Make it personal, right? If someone came at one of my kids, I would go like mama bear Rambo on their, like, I'll end there so you get, kind of get the idea, service, yeah. right? Uh, are you willing to guard your heart with that kind of fierce intensity, right? I hope you are, right? So we want to focus these next few minutes on the how. 
right? So that when you think these thoughts or when you feel these feelings, when these things surprise you, right? When your mind starts to go down this trail, uh, it should be a signal that something is not at peace in yeah. your heart, right? It should inform you uh, that you have some work to do. Mm. Because if you don't deal with what's going on on the inside, right? It eventually starts to make its way to the outside. Absolutely. And that's when we find our relationships feeling right. tension or feeling right. in trouble, right? So when you identify these things happening inside you, it means that you have some work to do, right? So and it's for all of us, right? So here they are. Here are the how-tos mm -hmm. uh, for these four things to watch for in your heart right. when it comes to guilt, anger, right. greed, and lastly, jealousy. Yeah, so when you identify these things happening inside of you, like Kay said, it means you have work to do. And so the first one I want to look at is guilt. Right? When your heart feels guilt, what it's really saying is, I owe you that you feel guilt, you are saying, I owe you. I owe you an apology. I owe you something in exchange because I took something from you, mm -hmm. right? You, you maybe didn't know about it, or maybe you do, or maybe I'm just too proud to admit it, and so I feel guilt. And what I'm saying is my heart is telling me, I owe somebody. And that leads to all kinds of mm -hmm. negative things in our relationships. It leads to walls being built. It leads to inauthenticity. Mm -hmm. It leads to dishonesty. It, it leads to secret keeping and distance. What's wrong? Nothing. What's wrong? Nothing. What's wrong? Really, nothing. It's like, is this going to go on for the rest of our marriage? Like, clearly something is wrong, but I, just, I don't want to tell you because I'm carrying something, right? And it seeps into our words and it makes its way into our relationships and it, and it causes damage. So that's the first thing to pay attention to, guarding your heart. What's in there? Are you, are you feeling guilt? Right. And the next one is, is anger, mm. right? And anger says, you owe me, right. whether it's directed at a person or whatever situation you find yourself, right? Because you hurt me, you took something from me. Right. So yeah, either you pay me back or I'm going to pay you back, right. right? Anger is this like crazy dance that we sometimes find yourself in. And now the problem with anger is that we all know this, that anger leaks. See, anger is not stationary, right? Anger is mobile. It's on the right. move. And anger leaks into our other relationships, right? It never stays isolated right. to just the relationship of origin. In other words, right, if you were hurt as a kid, right, or you were hurt at that last job, or you were hurt by that last girl, or you were hurt when he broke up with you, and by the way that he broke up with you, mm -hmm. and by the way that you found out, and right now you're carrying this anger, right? But Anger says that you owe me, and until you pay me back, I'm going to hold this over you. Mm. And I'm going to hold it over anyone else who reminds me of you, <laughs> right? And long after you are out of my life, I'm still going to hold on to uh, that anger. And it almost mm -hmm. holds you hostage uh, because of that thing that someone took from you way back mm. then. Yeah, the other one that we want to talk about is greed. And greed says, I owe me, right? Mm -hmm. Guilt says, I owe you. Anger says, you owe me. Greed says, I owe me. Like greed is the assumption that everything in the world is for my consumption, right? And, and I owe me and I know you're in need and, and those people might need something and, and you might be struggling, but, but you know, I owe me. I need to take care of me first. And, and the church needs money or, you know, folks over there raising money, but, but, but really that doesn't matter because my money doesn't belong to them. It belongs to me. And maybe I feel bad or I'm heartbroken, but but actually the check that needs to be written is to me. And when you have that perspective in your heart, right, you, you can justify almost anything. And, and it really becomes a filter for all of your decisions. Hmm. And when greed and, and that kind of perspective gets in your heart, like honestly, if, if we're going to be truthful about this, sometimes this affects all of us differently. But what we really believe is that our stuff is more valuable than people. Now, the people in our family, the people we're closest to, the people that we work with or work for, that we, we have this air that they feel it off of us, that all of them are working and competing with our stuff, right? And our job, our primary effort is to make sure everything's buttoned up or locked up or insured. And you can't touch that, right? Kids, don't touch that. Like your spouse can't touch that. And someone in your co, you know, your coworker, they, they try to get in your way or take your promotion or, you know, add something to the project. It's like, no, you can't, you can't engage. This is mine, right? And we find ourselves with that kind of language. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that way, when I feel that way, when people become less important than stuff, we should know that we have an issue in our heart. That should bother us. Yeah. 
And finally, the last one on the list is jealousy, right? And jealousy is when I want what they have or that somebody got something that is better than me or has what I want. And when I'm really honest, I feel that uh, they have what I deserve, right? Mm -hmm. She got who I deserve or he got what I deserve and life owes me, right? Jealousy says life owes me. And when you're feeling jealous, I mean, let's just admit, Jealousy, there's nothing worse than when you feel jealousy. I'm like, doesn't it make you feel like such a dirtbag? I mean, nothing is worse than jealousy, right? When you find yourself uh, secretly uh, not celebrating someone else's success or you feel threatened by their success and it causes you to not want to celebrate something good happening in your life. I mean, ick, mm -hmm. when we feel or that. worse, you celebrate when they fail. Right, that's worse <laughs> when you secretly kind of have this like, oh, I'm so bummed that didn't work out the way that you wanted, right? Ew, like jealousy uh, is so gross when we feel that, right? And if we're uh, courageous enough to admit it, we can all agree that jealousy is the worst, right? But if you wanna actually deal with the root of jealousy, mm -hmm. you've got to be willing to admit what the real problem is, right? At the end of the day, if you're honest, Jealousy takes it to the next level because with jealousy, our issue isn't actually just between you and the other person. Right. The truth about jealousy is that our problem is actually now with God. See, when you're jealous, whether you're conscious of it or not, you actually believe that God got it wrong and that God actually owes you, mm. right? Jealousy says God owes me. Right? And this is not just an issue between you and your sister-in-law because she married well or with your coworker because she got the promotion or the raise or whatever it was that you felt you deserved or whatever it was that you wanted, right? Or your roommate because she's kind of moving on to the next season of life and you still feel stuck, right? It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with what you actually think is that perhaps just maybe God slighted mm. you and now he owes you that thing instead of him and her. So mm. when you feel it, right, when you see it, you've got to address it, mm. right? David, Solomon's father, who was referred to many times as a man after God's own heart, yeah. right? Notice that language, that he had a heart that was in step with the heart of God. Mm -hmm. He wrote this in Psalm 51, verse 10. Mm -hmm. It says this, God, make my heart new and clean and make my spirit strong and true, deep inside of me, right? Psalm 51, verse 10. Now, you're not obligated to do any of what we are about to suggest, <laughs> um, truly, truly. But what we're about to talk about, right? The way to take care of your heart, Right? You don't have to be a follower of Jesus to do any of this work. And many followers of Jesus, right, myself included at times, mm. um, we are hesitant to do these things sometimes. But these things will actually right. help your relationships. They may be precisely the opposite of what you feel like doing or what you want to do in the moment. But if and when we do them, they will set up our relationships on a path that leads to flourishing and health. And when we live from the center of who we are, it is the truest reflection of who God actually created us to be. That's right. And so what do we do when we feel these things? What do we do when we feel guilt? Well, the first thing is that we confess, right? And not just to God, right, up there. I mean, he already knows, right? <laughs> but you actually confess to the person that you hurt, right? They might have no idea, mm -hmm. right? Now, this, this might not be what you were raised to do. And, and come on, let's be honest. You were barely raised to tell anyone the truth when you did something wrong. We, we naturally have this propensity in us to run and hide, and so maybe, oh, confessing it to God, that, that might be good enough, right? Mm -hmm. But really, when we talk about relational health and relational growth, it's not good enough to just confess it to God. We ultimately have to confess it to the person that we hurt. And, and let's be honest, that, that may temporarily damage your relationship or temporarily make your relationship a little tense, but that short-term discomfort yeah. is way better than long-term guilt. I mean, I know many of you, myself, we know what that feels like, yeah. right? When you carry that guilt, the longer you have it, the more it eats you up inside, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and it sucks the passion out of your relationships. It, it sucks the life out of your relationships, not just with the person that you hurt, but your other relationships. And, and God loves you too much to leave you that way. Yeah. And so come on, let's get rid of that. That's why God says you actually find freedom when you swallow your pride and confess. You're not really doing yourself or anyone else any favors 
when you pent all that guilt up inside of you, that your relationships, your present relationships and your future relationships, their success begins simply by doing the difficult work of confessing when we feel guilt. Right. And the next one is anger. And so for anger, right, most of us already know the answer to this, right? The anecdote to anger is to forgive, right? Do you know what forgiveness is, right? Forgiveness is simply identifying specifically what was taken from me. Mm -hmm. And then I decide that you don't owe me any. Right, I cancel the debts. It's not enough to say I had a terrible dad or a terrible mom or my boss or, okay, so maybe they were terrible, but granted, uh, what did they actually take from you? Right, you've got to be able to identify specifically what you feel was taken from you so that you can look at it and say, okay, I'm making a decision. You don't owe me this anymore. I'm canceling the debt. That is what forgiveness mm. is, right? It's canceling a debt to which we say, oh, I feel like I'm letting them off, right? It should hurt a little bit, <laughs> right? Uh, but that's exactly what it means is when you're letting someone off the hook as well, you'll find that you are actually the one that is freed in the mm. process. Truth is, is that what you're actually saying is that I will not be ruled by this anymore. Mm. That it's not gonna follow me into my next relationship. It's not gonna follow me into my next marriage. It's not going to impact the way I discipline my kids, the way that right. it impacted me, right? So that I'm done. I have decided that you don't owe me anymore, that mm. you are actually forgiven, and both of us are now free. So good. Mm. And what about greed, right? When, when, when we feel greed in our heart, how do we guard against that? Mm. Well, we contribute. We, we give. We, we write a check, or, or we serve somebody else, or we show up in a way that feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. you, you, just, you decide that I'm not going to be all about me anymore. I'm not going to be all about my wants, my stuff, mine, 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 right? Maybe it means giving generously to a nonprofit and not telling anybody. Maybe it means going and serving someone that if you're really honest, that you feel like they're beneath you, right? Because many times we, we hear that scripture, right? God loves a cheerful giver and we don't feel so <laughs> cheerful about it. And, and, and that's, that's true, right? But, but the reality is, is that you don't wait to be cheerful before you give, you give, you contribute, you become generous, you serve others, and you are actually surprised that when you do that, God's way is better, and you actually become happier about it than you thought you ever would. You have more peace by giving it away rather than clinging to it and protecting it and cleaning it and watching it, guarding it and ensuring it, right? That, that you actually lose that sense of stress that you have around guarding your stuff, and you begin to guard your heart. And so you find something valuable. You find something precious, something that you, if you're honest, your kids or your spouse or others have heard you say, oh, don't touch that, either literally or figuratively. And you say, actually, you know what? I don't need that anymore. I want it, but I don't need it. And maybe you sell it and you give the money away or you open it up and you let people enjoy it alongside of you and you move from collecting to contributing, and you begin to move your priority to people mm -hmm. rather than possessions. And, and over time, when we contribute, we will find the, mm -hmm. the grip and the prison of greed mm -hmm. is released from our hearts. And we talked about this last week, that Jesus' followers, we don't, we don't trust in riches, we trust in the one who richly provides, and that's how you guard your heart mm -hmm. from greed. And lastly, uh, we wanna talk about how do you respond to jealousy, right? Mm -hmm. When you find yourself in those moments, you actually can combat jealousy by stepping into celebration, mm. right? To begin by celebrating what God has given others, right? You begin to celebrate what God has given you, right? And you begin to celebrate out loud, mm. right? Not like, dear Karen, congratulations on the promotion, right? I was really hoping that I would have gotten it, but you genuinely deserve it, right? And by the way, your vacation looked fantastic and you looked awesome in your bikini and your kid's birthday party was a Pinterest sensation, right? <laughs> How do you do it all, Karen, <laughs> right? All jokes aside, uh, but you can honestly say, jealousy, you do not live in mm. my heart any longer, right? You can even give your own heart a pep talk, right? Their success is not a threat to me. Their win does not mean that I lost, right? You don't have to say, oh, I don't feel jealous, right? You don't have to deny that the jealousy is there because in fact, the jealousy can actually be telling you something uh, important about mm -hmm. your own heart, right? The jealousy can actually be pointing at something that you deeply desire or that you deeply want. And by giving yourself some compassion, by saying, mm -hmm. okay, jealousy, I see that you're here. 
right? Jealousy, I'm not jealous about everything, right? I'm not jealous when someone else wins an Emmy, or I'm not jealous when someone else lands on the moon, right? Jealousy only uh, affects us when it kind of rubs up against mm. this sense of self that we're creating, Certainly. right? That our ego or our false self, our pride is wounded when someone else's success bumps up with something that I actually want or mm. that I actually desire, yeah. right? Because you're not jealous of your nephew getting a monster truck for his fourth birthday, right? So what is it about that person's success? What is it about that person's achievement? Which I'll be honest, for me, the, the moments that I feel jealous is usually not so much about stuff or status, but it oftentimes has to do uh, with someone else's achievements, especially when it's in line with the kind of achievement that I specifically mm want, right? So how is that maybe true for you in those moments you find yourself being jealous? How is it actually pointing to something that you desire, to something that you want, to something that you want to believe is true about you? Yeah, and then to choose in that moment to mm -hmm. celebrate that that's true yeah. for that person and that you want it. Totally. It can actually motivate you. Totally. And it's important to approach all four of these things, guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy, uh, to approach them with compassion for ourselves, right? All jokes aside and all sarcasm aside, right? We want to bring the intensity and the energy around combating these things for the sake of our hearts, uh, for the sake of our hearts to be guarded. But we want to bring that ability and willingness to combat these things also partnered with a level of compassion and, and care for ourselves in the process, right? Because every single one of us is growing. None of us have arrived. And so uh, the courage it takes to actually step into uh, healing and right. growth, uh, give yourself lots of grace, give yourself lots of compassion as you step into this healing work. Because as you guard your heart, you're guarding yourself. Yeah. Right? It's your life. And this is what is so beautiful is that God actually cares about your life. Mm -hmm. God cares about what comes out of your heart. God cares mm -hmm. about your relationships. In fact, it was so clear at the end of Jesus' life on earth that he gathered his friends close and said, mm -hmm. you're going to see something in the next couple of hours when I am arrested and mm -hmm. beaten and murdered that is going to be horrific. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be scary. It's going to be confusing. Mm -hmm. But this is why. It's because... God loves you and I love you and that I want you to know that I'm freely giving myself up, giving my life away so that you and I can be brought back into relationship mm. with God. The essence of the gospel is because God cares about our relationships. And so as you explore this week, what is coming out of your heart, as you have these kind of flags show up, of, hey, I'm feeling guilt right now. What's that from? What do I need to confess? I'm feeling anger. Who do I need to forgive? Even if it was from a long time ago, that I can release them from that and in the process release myself. Yeah. I'm feeling greed. I, I'm trying to protect and hoard and, and hold on to mine. Mm -hmm. Where can I give? Where can I contribute? Where can I serve? Yeah. And I'm feeling jealous that, that I really wanted that. How can I celebrate that and in doing so empower myself through the Holy Spirit of God to move towards something that's clearly a craving and a desire? that I have. We're going to talk a lot more about that next week, but these are such great tools that have helped us in our relationships, not just marriage, but other relationships to protect and guard our heart, knowing that out of it, everything in our life flows. So we would love to just pray for you and encourage you that as you seek these out this week, as you pay attention to what's going on inside of you, that it would actually encourage and strengthen your relationships outside of you. So let's pray together. Father God in heaven, we just thank you so much, Lord, that you see us, that you see us for who we truly are, God, and that even when we have moments of greed and guilt and anger and jealousy, that Lord, that doesn't send you running in the opposite direction, but God, like a loving Father, it moves your heart to draw us closer. It moves you, uh, Jesus, to stand in the gap of where our brokenness and our human sin created a barrier. And God, you draw near to us. Ultimately, Jesus, you gave your life so that we could have hope, so that we could uh, ultimately have your spirit, so that we could receive a clean and a fresh heart through the forgiveness uh, that you so freely offer us, God. We don't take that lightly, God. We want to press in, we want to lean in, we want to be the kind of restorative community that takes you at your word, God. Uh, that leans into wisdom, like the wisdom of Solomon that we learned from today, God, like the wisdom of David, who was a man after your own heart, God. 
May that be true of us, God. May we be men and women after your own heart. May we be the kind of courageous followers that are willing to combat all of these flare-ups that our human hearts experience on a daily basis uh, and to be made new, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds through your word, through your spirit, God. We desire uh, so much we desire for our families, for our relationships uh, to be healed and whole. And God, we know that we need you in order to do that. So God, thank you that you've given us yourself, that you've given us everything that we need to love and follow after you. God, we love you so much. We pray this in Jesus' name.